What's going on, guys? It's Frito here from Your Overwatch. In today's video, we're going to be doing a full hero breakdown of the new DPS venture, going through their advanced combos to start and then into some deeper meta analysis as well. You are used to DPS Doomfist from diving you from up top. Well, Venture is a DPS that dives literally underground from underneath quick run through of their basic abilities. Your primary attack is a big projectile, which will four shot most squishies. This is a 200 health point squishy that doesn't really exist anymore and does a little bit of AOE damage as well, which is nice for applying the DPS passive, but as you can tell, not so much damage overall. So you're gonna want to be going for body shots on this. It doesn't crit, and if you only use the primary fire, your time to kill will be quite long, so you're going to have to combo with the other abilities. Alternate fire is your drill dash, which you can use in any direction. Use it to go vertically. It applies a bit of a knockback, not a huge one, so it can be used to CC tanks a little bit, but overall, I'd say Venture's not great at targeting tanks, but is going to be good at getting up close and personal with squishy targets as you're going to be able to knock them around and then apply your advanced melee as well. Whenever Venture uses an ability, they will get a bit of shield health, just as I popped out of the ground there, not even hitting anything, it's just using the ability is going to activate it. Venture signature movement is going to be Burrow, which in some cases can be used to dodge incoming attacks. It can cleanse you from status debuffs potentially, getting you underground to safety. Not quite a Reaper Wraith form or a Moira Fade, which could be used reactively to something, I think. It's too slow for that, but if you were, were anticipating something hitting you, you could use it for that. Instead, a lot of times, I think you're going to set it up for a big flank underneath or an actual dive. When burrowed, your drill dash has a reduced cooldown, so you actually can use it immediately to close the distance even more to set up for a big pounce out of the ground attack. So that's what we're going to do here. Going underground, channeling it up, and it does extra damage as you do so. As you go underground, you're not going to want it to time out because if you do and don't press the primary attack, it'll do a very small amount of damage. Whereas instead, when you're near the end of burrow, just start channeling it anyway in order to get an attack out. So you see how big the AOE is there? Quite a lot of damage and melee damage. It's pretty easy to hit. You might catch something out even on accident. I think you should be doing that every time. It, it will launch you in the air, so you have to compensate for that. But that is the start of Venture's big combo. So this is the cooldown cycle we're going to want to go for. We're going to burrow, dash immediately so that we close some distance while the it goes on cooldown, charge up the attack, pop out, shoot melee, and then we have another dash in order to chase. That's what we're going to call Venture's all-in combo, using everything in order to secure that kill. Hopefully your team goes in with you. Venture can play this way in order to guarantee a backliner kill, but you are going to be all-in now with no cooldowns after that point. The alternative cooldown cycle that you could consider is trying to use either the burrow or the dash to get out. The cooldown of dash is eight seconds and the cooldown of burrow is going to be another eight seconds. So what we could do is burrow dash immediately, set up behind, try to use as much of the burrow as possible, attack melee and then use the dash to get out if that's even possible. Vetra's ultimate tectonic shock applies a earth shatter style effect that does knock targets up. Targets won't get hit by this if they're vertical. It applies kind of an insane amount of damage and you only get four shots with it. Keep that in mind. So you can hold it for a bit. Don't spam your shots out immediately because you're going to want to make sure to time it when targets are hitting the ground and then the travel time of the projectile itself. With that being said, you do have time while using the ultimate to potentially burrow and reposition, come back out and hit some combos. And since it's a transformation ultimate, I suggest you prioritize living over trying to get kills with it because a lot of things are going to start looking at you while you start using it. Okay, so those are the quick tips to get you up and running for this weekend to dominate with the new DPS if you can wait for the queue times. My first general impressions of the hero is that I'm in love with them. As a flex DPS player, it's amazing to get these heroes added to the game that are about using their mobility. I think Venture has an extremely high skill ceiling and probably overtuned in this version. As soon as the community really starts maximizing them, I think we might all conclude that they are simply a better version of a combination of other flex DPS playstyles. In some ways, they have similar cooldowns or attacks like Junkrat or Reaper, but the way they differ is with the intensity and skill ceiling of their movement, more similar to DPS Doomfist, who was more egregious, but considering you can go underground, launch up, and then even vertically jump, as well as all the horizontal play, as well as underground play to escape, they have a lot of options that other DPS simply don't have, while at least with the current balancing, 
far better DPS combos at close range. Today's video sponsor is a personal favorite of mine. Factor Meals is an easy recommendation because I liked them so much, I became a paying customer myself. And I think if you try them out, you're going to see and taste the difference for yourself. The reason why I love Factor so much is that it fits in a gaming lifestyle. It's healthy, convenient, tasty fast food, everything you could ask for. Factor Meals has tons of different diet options to choose from. I usually go for keto options myself. The X Factor to me is the quality of their ingredients and just how they use their flavors with everything you get. The quality of the meats particularly was quite a highlight for me, but the sauces and seasonings are to die for. Mouth-watering food. I can't believe that it can taste so good coming out of a package like this. I've tried other competitors and none of them come even close. Factor blows them all out of the water. So you're going to want to try them out for yourself get 50 percent off your first factor box and free wellness shots for life using my link that means you can choose two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you're an active subscriber click the link in the description or scan the qr code with your phone try out factor today and taste the difference in fact i think it's even more accurate to compare them to a character like genji who also has close range burst combos that are a little harder to hit i think because you really should be hitting headshots a bigger percentage of your damage is in the melees with Venture, with the major difference being, of course, Venture needs to navigate on the ground. So sometimes playing from high ground is tricky because you need to be able to use Burrow. But even that doesn't feel too much of a limitation to me because of the Burrow attack already sends you vertically to begin with. And then Drill Dash can send you in any direction anyway. Now let's talk about some hero matchups. First of all, your worst matchups are against the enemy's tank because you just don't really have the damage or tank bust to do a lot to them. Of course, with Focus Fire, everyone can always kill a tank. But against tanks, I think in general, you should be looking to dodge them. A lot of tank heroes' abilities are telegraphed, and you can just nope out of there and make really good use of your Burrow ability, which lasts a long time. Whether it's Junker Queen winding up her big abilities onto you, Ramatra using Nemesis, Doomfist all inning, you can nope out of there. Either down low with Burrow or up high with Drill Dash. The worst matchups for Venture in general will be mobility heroes, particularly vertical heroes like Flyers. Mastery of them, though, will give you a fighting chance because you do have some verticality yourself. But contrary to that, your best matchups are against immobile heroes, particularly static ones, who you will be able to chase down with your multiple ways to move. That's usually the case for a dive hero into a backliner style hero, but the older design of heroes definitely don't have as many options as Venture does. So I think the tuning for Venture is going to be a bit tricky. It's kind of power creepy. It reminds me of Sojourn coming out, which was just an upgraded version of Soldier and Widow put together. We'll see how it evolves when players learn counterplay because the best way to counter them is to know that they're going to go under you, see it coming and reposition away. They're gonna be far less effective the more mobile and vertical your comp is, but I think much more applicable than similar closer range counterparts like Reaper and Junkrat because Venture has more vertical options. And with Mastery, I think you could still get them to work. The one thing that stands out to me for day one is just how forgiving and damaging the Burrow attack is because even if it didn't do any damage, setting up a dive on a Squishy, I find it incredibly easy to land a primary coming out at close range. And even if the enemy uses any kind of mobility to get away, you can drill dash to close the distance and all in on them hit them with a melee for sure and another shot your ability to all in on things is very, very guaranteed. Now, getting out might not be, but in comparison, Reaper's damage is much lower. Junkrat playing that way is much easier to hit. Genji has dash and reflect, but would have to hit much more difficult close range headshots to emulate the same amount of damage. So overall assessment, current version overtuned. But if we want to review their kit as a concept for Overwatch, I think it's a beautiful design. The kind of gameplay that only a hero shooter like Overwatch can provide. The character themselves is interesting as they're bright and upbeat. They seem like they would have been good friends with Mei, who also is a scientist. Venture's voice lines are a bit playful and if anything, apologetic, kind of like Mei. Overall, they have an upbeat personality, which levels out with some of the more try-hardy characters we've been getting recently. Life Weaver was a whole nother thing, but Ram, Sojourn, Junker Queen, they're all kind of aggro. The gameplay feel of characters is also very important. As someone who grew up playing Quake, hero shooters come naturally to me, and Overwatch has a long list of mechanics from arena shooters back in the day. Running at things with the drill reminds me of old school shooters. In Quake 3, when you got a similar melee kill, it would say, humiliation. 
I also really love the really elaborate gun. All of their animations are really satisfying, and anything that feels like hitting a rocket from Quake, I absolutely love, whereas most other games just have hit scans. I've always loved shooting projectiles. Their primary fire is perhaps a bit too easy to hit, but it isn't the highest damage projectile, so maybe that levels out. But all the sound effects are really cool and satisfying. Drill dashing and comboing someone with a melee feels great to do, but hopefully not as bursty and severe as playing against DPS Doom from Overwatch 1, which was an absolute nightmare. Something interesting they've done with Overwatch 2 design is often split up abilities with their impact. So for example, if we started off with Sombra dealing more damage to hack targets, if that felt too oppressive, well, they can put that effect onto a new ability, Virus, which does higher DPS to a hack target rather than just a blanket easy damage amp. They did the same thing with the rework to Roadhog where instead of having a guaranteed one-shot kill combo, voila, a new ability to get it sometimes if you combo it into the trap. I think you can draw a similar line for Ramatra to be a much more interesting tank version of Overwatch 1, Bunker, or Risa. Deploy a shield, poke from range, apply a CC, but in all versions, the Overwatch 2 version is less severe and annoying and obnoxious. Venture is similar where as opposed to charging up a full Doomfist punch into a wall to one-shot kill you from Overwatch 1, well now it's a little bit more telegraphed. You go underneath, melee, chase, melee again. It's certainly less obnoxious from Overwatch 1 Doom, but I think when you start playing against a good Venture, you're still going to be as terrified against them. It's always a bit of a trade-off with Overwatch characters because we certainly love the heroes to be unique, but sometimes the uniqueness of that is just simply easier than playing other heroes. At Overwatch 1 and the metal ranks, it was one of the easier ways to get kills. And I'm praying that Venture doesn't feel that same way, because hopefully you need a little bit more finesse and game sense to set up the similar time to kill meleeing into the opponent, which is easier than aiming a lot of things. I think it would be nice if Venture landed in a place that made them feel like Reaper with extra steps, as opposed to DPS Doom. My major concern with Venture's design is similar and analogous to Sojourn, where when you have a character that has such high skill expression, insane survivability, and is viable in all stages of the fight, they can be really hard to balance. Often characters have their power budget allocated towards getting mid-fight value or ultimate fight value. And when you have high upside in both and strong escapes, there's not really a moment where your character is weak. Where on one hand, the skill expression of that is great, like high-end Sojourn gameplay is insane. On the other hand, Venture's going to always have the option to either go aggressive or defensive. Having some of the best tools in the game to both dodge some of the biggest offense and all in to gain offense themselves. Really, Venture feels to me like the flex DPS vision for Sojourn and we're just kind of exchanging needing to hit rail headshots for melee combos. It's not the worst thing in the world, because both characters are fun, but before we add hero bands to the game, this kind of design is just going to power creep other playstyles out of existence. Or they have the alternate problem, like they did with Sojourn, where they have to put the numbers so low that the average player isn't really going to be able to use them, because the skill expression maximizing the fluidity of their kit is so high at the higher end. And I don't like that outcome either. And there is one last topic that we will cover in today's video, Video. Undoubtedly, the comment section is already at war about this because if you've tuned into any Twitch stream or looked at any conversation about the new hero Venture online or paid close attention to my use of pronouns in this video, Venture is our first declared non-binary character. They go by they, them pronouns. And I will have to admit, this is a brand new experience for me. It took serious effort to try to train my brain to use they them in this context to describe a singular person. On one hand, I wish we had a more clear term because I find it very confusing to have to say sentences like they aren't as good at playing them. But wait, hold on. Who am I talking about? On the other hand, I want anybody who feels like this is forced onto them to think about the upside for the non-binary fans of Overwatch who now finally have a character they can identify with. I see the argument that this is Overwatch devs forcing us to address this. But art typically is on the forefront of forcing us to address social issues. Where else are we going to do it? Even if it is uncomfortable to learn, doing so makes yet another marginalized group feel seen and heard in our community. And gaming is certainly a place that the outcasts of the world can all gather together to have a shared common interest. I've certainly felt like alienated and an outcast many times in my life. 
and gaming has been a place that I've been able to band together with people of all different backgrounds, personalities, identities, nationalities, whatever. But with that being the case, I would ask that we all in our community of Overwatch players are respectful and polite when asking for someone to use the appropriate pronoun. As speaking from experience, I can say that it is confusing for me, something new that I have to get accustomed to, and not something I come naturally to because, well, I barely speak the one language I can speak. I've struggled to learn Spanish many times and struggled with that, and I'm a bit dyslexic with words anyway. So if in future videos I do accidentally use the wrong pronoun, please know that I do not mean any harm or to alienate anyone, and it's super uncool to try to go on a cancel culture brigade over something like that. Because I think us as Overwatch players are all on the same page when it comes to inclusion. That was the whole premise of the game to begin with, even in 2016 when they launched it, putting a homosexual female on the box cover. I would plead to the Overwatch community to correspond on this subject with love and patience. I believe that we're all born equal, and this is another way that Overwatch continues its history as being a forefront leader when it comes to inclusion, just as they were at the launch of the game in 2016. While it might be the norm in gaming now, Overwatch 1 released in a time where militaristic, male-focused shooters were the norm, and largely due to Overwatch's popularity, now lots of other games that have come out since are much more diverse in their cast of characters, for the better. I wish I didn't even feel the need to make this section of the video at all, because I personally believe these things are better when they're normalized as opposed to some debate topic. Non-binary people are humans like the rest of us and deserve the same love, respect, and representation that the rest of us enjoy. That all being said, they is hard to say in some sentences, not gonna lie. Hard to wrap my head around. Probably gonna mess it up at some point. But language evolves as time evolves. We will get used to it. It's not a big deal. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to actually get notified when our videos come out. We've been live streaming each and every day, which you'll get notifications for on this channel, but we also have a Twitch page where we multi-stream too. Check us out playing live there. We're currently completing a tank solo queue challenge where I'm near at my career high on the roll. We'll be doing more of that tomorrow and after that, grinding up our SR for combined top 500 with member and subscriber viewer games as well as VOD reviews to come shortly thereafter. I'd love to see you at the live streams. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you all next time.